Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in. My name is Cindy. I'm part of the GeoTab support team, and I'm really excited to be going over today's video. Um, Jen, a really awesome community manager, has created a segment that asks for input from resellers and customers in regards to report customization. So this is a really popular topic. I think you will find it very useful today. I'm going to be going over one of the requests that was sent in, and the request that came in was from LP. This request will target hours of service and ELD. So if your company is focused on ELD or HOS, this report will probably be really good for you. Um, if I lose you anywhere in the video, feel free to just reopen it, rewind, pause, and play as much as you need. I'll also be adding some additional links to some more Excel trainings. Um, so any questions that you have, you can also feel free to ask us. So the request reads, duty status time summary for all drivers within the specified time range. For instance, I would pull a report for last week or rolling seven day period from the dashboard and expect to see the total hours by status on drive off. There's similar logic in the fleet payroll summary, but requires macros and produces one sheet per driver, which is not necessary for our requirement. Also, it has problems compiling data that extends prior to or after the period, boundary logs. And problems counting daily totals if a driver is working past midnight. It does not scale well for any fleet larger than 30 to 50 drivers. Looking for a simpler summary, only alternative that is more efficient and that has better data integrity. So really great question. And I do wanna point out that LP did see that the fleet payroll summary report does have the logic that he likes, but it is not displayed in the way that he would like. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the fleet payroll summary report that we already offer in the marketplace. We're going to tweak it and we're going to edit it um, and we're going to get the results that LP is looking for. So within your database, you'll be able to find any of our customized reports in the marketplace. So you can go ahead and just go there and we're going to pull up the payroll summary report. Okay, upon opening the report, you'll see um, that it is in a protected view, so you'll have to enable the editing. And it does have macros, as LP mentioned. So we wanna enable those macros because we are gonna be working with the report. And as you can see, once the macros are enabled, it does populate different sheets for different drivers. Um, and this is what LP is not looking for. So what we're gonna wanna do is we want to remove the macro from this Excel worksheet and we're going to just provide a summary. So what we're gonna do here is we wanna make sure that we have our developer tools open within Excel. And you're gonna find that if you already don't have it in your ribbon, you're gonna find it in your options section. So if you go to file options within Excel, there is a section that says customize ribbon. So you wanna click on that and turn on your developer tools. Okay. That'll add an additional tab here that does provide you the option to work with the macros. And in that, edit them or delete them. So we're gonna click on developer. Okay, and we're gonna click on visual basic and the macros. This is the section that we're gonna use. So go ahead and click on the macros. This is the macro that this report is running with and we're going to delete it. Okay, we're sure we wanna delete it. So we're gonna go into visual basic next. Okay. And we're going to open this workbook. And this workbook, this is the code that makes the macro run. So we can just delete this since we're not going to be running a macro. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and just save that. Okay. We can close this out and it'll take us back to our regular report or our default report. And what we're going to want to do, since it no longer has any macros, we're going to unhide the report tab, the summary tab, and the data tab. Anytime that you're working with any of these reports, you want to make sure that you are looking at all of the data. So any um, sheet that is hidden is probably information that you're missing. So you want to make sure to just unhide any of those sheets. And as you can see, 
here, the data tab is going to be all of the raw data that you're getting from the UI. So this is going to be a lot more information than probably what you need. So anytime that you're working with these customizations, make sure to check the data tab to see if there's any information that you may want on the report that is not already populated previously. Okay. The report tab is going to be similar to the data tab, except the report tab just looks a lot nicer and is a lot more organized. So this is just another view. And the summary tab, summary tab will have all of the drivers listed, okay? So as I mentioned previously in the beginning when we started editing this template, the template does separate the drivers individually per sheet, but it does that working with that macro and pulling the data from the summaries pivot table. So if we remove the macro and we remove these additional sheets, all we're going to be left with is the data tab, the report tab, and the summary tab. So LP did say that he wants a summarized view that is compiled, um, and this is pretty much it. This is exactly what LP is looking for. So we're going to just delete these additional tabs that we don't need. And we can save the report this way. Now, this is not going to be the final look because we do still have to account for boundary logs um, and any logs that um, extend over you know, the period of time that we're running the report for. So this is just going to be the template that we're going to be using. So I'm going to go ahead and just save that. Okay, and it's no longer a macro-enabled workbook, so we want to just save it as a regular Excel workbook. And we're going to save it. Okay. So now that we have the skeleton of the report, we have removed the macros, and we are only showing in the data of the report and the summary sheet, we're going to re-upload this back into the database. So I'm going to go ahead and go back into my database. Just going to look for the file that we were working with. I'm going to give it a very distinctive name. So we're going to do community test report. And you want to go ahead and just set it up as you normally would. So I'm going to turn on the report view for this, and I only want to read the regular statuses. So on, off, drive, sleep, or birth, uh, personal conveyance, and any yard move. Um, if you would like any of the additional statuses, you can go ahead and just add those in here. But for this one, we're just going to do the regular statuses. Okay, and since this is based off of a advanced HOS logs report, there's no way to pull all of the drivers from the database. You do have to set this report up as a dashboard and let it run on the dashboard or be sent out as an emailed report. Um, for the sake of this video, we're just going to be setting up a dashboard report. So it, the same thing will apply if you do an email report, though. So um, feel free to set that up as well in your own database. For dashboard viewers, I'm going to select everyone within my database. I'm going to use LP suggestion of previous seven days. And we're going to do a refresh period of daily. So this means on a rolling seven day period. The next run date, we're going to just leave it the way it is. And we're also going to enable the statuses here. We're going to save that. Okay, now the report is added onto our dashboard. So I'm going to download it um, and we're going to verify, verify that the macro is removed and it no longer prompts us to enable the macro. Okay, so this is the report. We're going to enable the editing and here it is. So now the report does not have the macros enabled and it does not create additional sheets for each driver. It does provide you a summary of all of the drivers within one sheet. Great, now that the first part has been completed, we're gonna take a look at exactly uh, the issues that 
are currently present in the format of this report. Um, and that is that this report uh, does run on the 24 hour clock. Um, and that's how the formulas are created. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. So if we go into our report tab, we can see that here we have a couple of different drivers. And if you worked with this report previously, you know that any time that there is just one log for one driver in this report, it's usually the fact that it's a continuous log. Anytime that there have been status changes, the report will create a different row per status change. So this driver only had one on log for this period of time. Okay, so we can assume that the log with, that started on June 16th, 2020 at 2.45, 14 a.m. has extended until the time that we ran our report. Okay, and the issue is that this report does not currently have the full duration. So it'll stop at June 17th at midnight. So 24 hours minus 2.45 a.m. will give us a duration of 21 hours, 14 minutes, and 46 seconds. Now, if we multiply 24 hours by seven days, which is what we're running this report for, we know that the duration should look something like 168 hours, okay? So all of these drivers here have only had one log for this entire period, whereas myself, I've had a couple of different logs and hence the reason why it's showing different duration statuses. So we wanna make sure that this formula here in our duration is extended and we add a couple of different conditions that will make sure that all of our logs are accounted for, okay? Um, now, we're, we will be going over these formulas, but if you're not too familiar with them, we are also going to be adding, a, as I mentioned earlier, a link um, in which you will be able to review the different formulas that we're gonna be using today. Um, and they explain it probably a lot better than me. So feel free to go in there um, and explore some of these really great formulas that you can start implementing into your reports, okay? So this if formula is an if and. So it's saying if A9 equals A10, so if this driver is the same as this driver, and the date is the same, then I wanna take the time from the latest log and subtract it from the time of the previous log, which in ret return will give us a duration, okay? Now, if this statement is not true, then what this formula is asking Excel to do is it's asking to take the number one, which in time is 24 hours, minus J9. So 24 minus 2.45.14 a.m., um, and then it'll give us our duration. So because the drivers are not the same, and because the dates um, are the same, but in combination, it, this is not true because the drivers are not the same, then what Excel is gonna do is that it's gonna do one minus J9. And we don't need that, okay? So we don't need to take this duration because that's the reason why we're getting the 21, 14, 46. What we're gonna do is we're gonna delete that and we're going to add another if statement. So we're gonna do if, Oops, apologize about that. Let me go back in here. Not sure what happened there. Okay. So if, okay, and we're also gonna add an and condition. So if and this driver is not the same as this driver, let's separate that with a comma. And this driver is not the same as the previous driver, which means that they only have one log for the day or for the period. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're going to take the run date from our data tab, okay, which is the date that we ran the report, the date and the time, minus we're gonna take our from date. So we're gonna take our run date from our from date, and that will give us the full duration of the log, okay? 
we want to make sure to lock this in because it, when you do bring the formula down, we want to make sure that it always references B2 and B3 in the data tab. So we're going to hit F4 and we're going to lock those in. Okay. So with this, we can go ahead and close it out for now. And let's see what kind of results we're getting in our formula. So I'm going to click enter. And now we see that the duration of this on status is now 168 hours, um, zero minutes and zero seconds. So by double clicking this green uh, square at the bottom, we can bring that down. Okay. And now we can see that we have duration and we also have extended durations on a lot of these logs. Now, the only thing that I'm seeing here that is an issue is this false statement here. Okay, so there's a couple of these here. In order to get rid of these false statements, we're going to add another if condition here. So we're going to go back. We're going to add our third if statement. And we're going to just scroll all the way up to the top. We don't want to work from the bottom. Well, at least it's not my preference, but you can absolutely do so if you, if you like that better. Okay. So what other possibility can we encounter in this report? So the third thing that we can possibly encounter is that the driver is the same. So if and the driver is the same. but the dates are not the same. Okay. And what we want to do here is we want to take our time, but we're going to take it from our raw data. Okay, so we're going to go to our data tab. We're going to do from A12. We're going to subtract A11. And we can close this one out. Let's close out my end statement here. I'll add my parentheses. Okay. And we have now added our third condition, which will get rid of these false statements. So this false statement here was populating. And if I go back up, and bring my formula down, we should see a duration on these logs. Okay, let's see that here. I'm gonna just double click it all the way to the bottom. Okay. So it's looking pretty good now, but I do still see one last false statement here. So we have to figure out exactly why this is happening. So this false statement, if we look here, we can see that the first statement says that if A87 equals A88, okay, that's not true. So we can skip this first part. Let's go into our second if statement. So if and, a87 is not A88, okay, so that's true. And A87 is not A86, well, that's not true. So this second if statement does not apply to this cell either. Okay, so now we go into our third condition. If A87 equals A88, this is also not true. So we need to come up with yet another if statement here, okay? And this second if statement is going to be very similar to all of these other ones, except this is going to have another uh, different uh, condition to be met. So what we wanna do here is we want to add another if and, um, and we wanna make sure that our next if and says, if the first driver 
is not the same as the second driver and the dates are not the same okay which in this case would make that a true statement then uh, i want to take the date or the the run date for this report and i want to subtract the status the date status or the date time for this log and i'll show you exactly what i mean by that if i go back up i'm gonna apply my formula to the very first cell here and again i'm just going to add another formula so let's go ahead and do an if and this if will be for that last false statement that we're still getting so if and a9 is not a10 and also the date is not the same and i'll close out my end statement here And I'll take my runtime minus my duty status date time. Okay. Now the only one that we want to lock down here is data B2 because this will never change or it shouldn't change. Okay. And then I can just go ahead and enter my formula. Okay. So this status did not change. And let's go ahead and make sure that none of the other set. Uh, durations are changing and they're not so they all seem to be correct still working fine and the last false statement should be the only one that is updating a time and there it is so the last time that this off log was generated was at 3 10 p.m on june 22nd and it's been or it's had a duration of 11 hours and 35 minutes and all of the other logs seem to be populating properly. Okay. So let's look at our summary tab and let's see what that's looking like. So if we go to summary, right click our pivot table and just refresh it. Okay. We're gonna see that our times have now updated. Now the total time is the only one that is having a little bit of an issue here and does have some negative times. So we're gonna go into this section of the report tab and check what's going on here. Let's go to our report tab. We see that our total time is at times populating properly, as we see here, and at times it is not. So the reason why this happens is because the number uh, that is given as a result is a negative number or um, it's a, it's just, there's an error with it. So for example, this one um, was able to give us our total time because we're taking the clock out time minus the clock in time uh, minus the sum ifs of the off duty time. Um, so because this is a function or a calculation that can be completed, uh, we are getting an actual total time. Now the next log or the next entry here, uh, we do see that we have number signs. So this is an invalid calculation. So what we're going to want to do is add more conditions to this formula that is that already exists to make sure that we eliminate the uh, number signs. And I'm not sure how many I have of those here, but uh, looks like a couple. So yeah, we're going to just go ahead and edit that. So we're going to add an additional uh, condition here and we're going to add an if and statement okay. and with this if and statement we're going to be uh, taking care of uh, the logs that are continuous logs so all of the logs for the first drivers that we have in our report we're going to take care of them here okay so let me go back to our total time 
column and continue with my if and statement. So we're gonna do if and this driver is not the same as this driver and this driver is not the same as this driver. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our run date from our start date or from our from date. Okay, and this is going to be if our value is true. Okay. And this calculation will only happen when this value is false. Okay, so let me go ahead and lock these in. Okay, so we see that the very first cell did not change anything. But as we bring that down, we see that those number signs have been removed. So let's go ahead and do that here. Okay, once we have that updated, we can go into our summary tab. And we're gonna go ahead and refresh our page. Okay, and now we have our pivot table that gives us our individual drivers along with their total time uh, and we have no errors. So that's great. Okay, the last thing, and this is optional, um, you really don't have to do it, but I think it's a good option just because you will be able to filter out any continuous logs and get different totals. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our report tab and we're gonna add another column. So we're going to add a type of log column. So we're gonna do type of log. And again, for this kind of log, for this kind of um, condition or this kind of result, we're gonna use another if formula, another if and. So this is the most important uh, formula combination that you're gonna be using with this report. So make sure you get very comfortable with this. So if and, okay, we're gonna do if this driver is not the same as this driver and this driver is not the same as the previous driver. Okay, and the time in K9 equals the time in N9. So the start time is the same as the clock in time. Okay, we're gonna type continuous log. Log. And I missed our parentheses here to close out the and statement. Okay, and if our value is false, we're gonna do not continuous log. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and close out our parentheses. We wanna bring that down. So because these drivers only have one log, these are all continuous logs. Okay, um, I have two driver profiles. This one had a continuous log. Uh, this one didn't, so these are two different driver profiles. So this is not a continuous log because I had additional logs after. Okay. So what we can do is we're gonna go back into our summary tab. We're gonna update our pivot table. And we're gonna go into our pivot table analyze and we're gonna look at our field list. And what we wanna do here is we wanna add that continuous log um, information. So I named it type of log, so I'm gonna find it here. And I'll bring it out to our filters. Okay, and our filters do show up here at the top. So what we'll do is under the type of log, you can either select only the continuous logs 
you can select only the not continuous logs. And as you can see, whenever you make it, the changes here in the filter, your totals also change. So if you're only looking at continuous logs, this is gonna be your total time, your on-duty time, driving time, and so on and so forth. If you change this and do not continuous log, okay, it'll also update the totals. And you can go ahead and do all, and it'll unfilter the whole pivot table. So that's how you get this completed. Um, I'm going to save it now and re-upload it. So I'm going to hide our data sheet. And I'll also hide our report sheet. Any changes that you want to make here, you can also make them. Um, you can remove this text box. remove that here. We can also remove any of this additional information. We'll go ahead and delete that. Okay. You can also rename it if you'd like. Um, you can delete these columns here just to make it a bit cleaner. Okay. Um, so I will just file save. Save us. Let's do okay. I'm going to take it back to my database. And I'm just going to replace the already existing report. Name it here. Okay, and I'm just going to save it and then we're going to re download it from our dashboard, and all of our formulas should be working properly. I'm going to enable the editing. And there you have it. So here are all of the drivers. Here are all of their times. Um, here are the clock in, clock out times. So this will include the um, extended logs, boundary logs, logs over midnight. Um, and also it will take care of showing all of the drivers in one sheet. I hope this was really helpful, helpful for all of you. Um, as I mentioned, we will be updating any helpful links that uh, are relevant to this report. But if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the community. We look forward to more requests next month um, to see what it is that we can come up with for you all and what can help you. Uh, remember that these formulas that I used, they are not... Uh, they, you don't have to do them this way. You can absolutely, absolutely use different types of formulas or um, use less formulas or which, whatever it is that you prefer. You can remove pivot tables, um, but this is just an idea. So yeah, I hope you, got, you all have a wonderful day. And if there's anything else that we can do for you, um, feel free to reach back out to us.